Thank you, Professor Robertson. I mean, I, after such an introduction, I think I just may leave and <laughs> leave. <laughs> because, uh, I, yeah, yeah. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank, thank people at the Center for Japanese Studies for inviting me to give this talk. As Professor Robertson mentioned, in 2005 and six, I spent very productive and enriching year at the CJS as a TVP professor. Uh, and I would like to, s I'm grateful, very grateful to Professor Robertson as well as to Yuri Fukuzawa and to uh, uh, Robert, Roberta Nerison Lowe who uh, allowed, this, uh, allowed me come, come, come back to this wonderful place where I feel at home. Uh, the paper I present her here today is, as, as was told, a uh, part of the larger study which was summarized in my recent book. You don't need the, the, <laughs> the slide anymore. Uh, uh, the ethnography in the book is based on a long-lasting uh, dialogue, mainly with the women uh, with women living in a typical middle-class neighborhood that I call uh, Royal Heights. Uh, it's a suburban condominium complex, or mansion, as it is, is it called in Japanese, located in the Kansai area at a convenient uh, commuting distance from central Osaka. Uh, my dialogue with, with uh, the women continued between 2003 and 2011 in recurrent visits to the neighborhood, in-depth interviews, uh, tea parties, as well as in a long, uh, 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 long uh, distance dialogue through e-correspondence mainly. Uh, <laughs> do you hear me? Well? Okay, uh, so these are some pictures from the neighborhood, uh, and we also uh, so most of the dialogue. I mean, the the, the virtual dialogue was e-correspondence, but we also had a forum uh, in the internet called Ochashio. Let's do tea with the, the women. Uh, the research, as was as Professor Robertson said, the research was conducted in collaboration with Marco. A, a friend and a principal informant who became a collaborator in this research. In the book I relate in length to, the, to my approach to collaborative ethnography, which is an ethnography that deliberately and explicitly emphasizes collaboration at every point in the ethnographic process without veiling it. Marco's name is the only non-fictive name in the book, was such a collaborator. Uh, although, as said, I see her as a co-author because we did think about many ideas together, but not a co-writer of the book. I am not going to go into detail about this methodological aspect here, but I would like, I, if you would like, I can, we can discuss it in the Q&A. So I embarked on this, on this research following actually uh, Mariko's personal search for a way at a stage of her life when her young daughter at, at last crossed the three-year-old threshold or the mandatory years of exclusive motherly protection known uh, in Japan as Sansaiji Shinwa, uh, the three-year-old uh, myth, uh, and could start kindergarten. When her three-year-old uh, three started kindergarten, uh, Mariko wrote to me in an email in 2003 uh, as she wrote to me, she was looking for the concrete answer for the question that had been troubling her, and it, she wrote to me like, uh, I'm, this is a quote, is it okay or not to, is it okay, I'm, I'm asking myself, she said, is it okay or not to be a sengyoshuku, to be a professional housewife? At my end of our already quite uh, uh, active electronic correspondence, Mariko's to be or not to be question sparked my professional curiosity about Japanese women and in fact blazed the trail for this research which is largely a serious joint effort to look carefully at the role of the housewife or professional housewife and its impact on an impact on and meaning for women in contemporary Japan. My paper today, however, is not directly concerned with the idea and perception of shufu uh, or housewife. My main focus here is in what I refer to as the Japanese corporate gender contract. Uh, uh, gender contract uh, is a term coined to describe a complicated process by which, as you can see, by which relationship between men and women are shaped. The, ter the terminology of, of gender contract, which aims at identifying and explaining abstract relationships between men and women, helps us better understand the social, economic, and cultural relations among the state, the labor market, and the home. The concept of contract is, is obviously a metaphor. It is useful for sparring thoughts like, who are the signi uh, signatories of the contract? What are the gender duties and responsibilities, rights and privileges? How much space are there for negotiations, for quarrels, for changes, for exits, and so forth? The term gender contract has been proposed in an attempt to articulate the connection between the, 
uh, capital, labor, and, and, and the state and the family, indicating the default positioning of women as wives who depend on their husbands for financial and overall support. However, whereas most uh, uh, literature des describe gender contracts in terms of welfare regimes, social policies, and economic arrangements, I would like to highlight here the cultural aspects of this metaphorical contract. In other words, I offer to look at the way it culture this contract, this metaphorical contract, culturally shapes women's and men's views about their roles at work or in society, shakai, as it is called in Japan, like there is home or kate and there is shakai, as well as at home. So we, we have shakai or society at one place at at home, and I want to look at the cultural aspect of the contract. I suggest to term the gender contract which developed in post-war Japan, the corporate gender contracts, uh, the corporate gender contract, and I'll explain more about it. The metaphorical signatories on these contracts are the Japanese state, Japanese men as salarymen, and Japanese women as professional housewives. As I hope to show here, this contract, uh, which lays uh, down clearly gendered uh, social roles, may trap both men and women. Uh, I must say here that while I, uh, will, while I will focus mainly on the state and uh, here, as it is uh, represented through the corporate sector, this view is based on my larger concept of the state I as it is articulated in the book. The state, with a capital S, is regarded as a sh shorthand for several dominant uh, agents and agencies, including the government, the corporate sector, uh, the media, and the market, which collectively uh, though, lost, though not seamlessly, uh, produce and reproduce the status quo. The power of this state becomes comprehensible when state forms are understood as cultural forms and cultural images are regarded as extensively state-regulated. Through this state power, which is often invisible, culturally dominated images and self-images are constructed by way of continuous suppression of alternatives coupled with acti active encouragement by state activities and agencies of preferred forms. So we have encouragement of a specific form and, and actually suppression of other forms. And the, 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 uh, the, these forms which are encouraged by the states uh, soon become recognized and ta taken for granted as the reality. The emergence of the, emergence of the corporate gender contract is, uh, sorry, in Japan, uh, is strongly related to a more general process of the standardization of the Japanese family. What has, has been dubbed as the post-war Japanese family system has its roots in the emergence of the Japanese new middle class, as it was called, and should be understood on the background of the formation of a new social structure which entails a strict gender role division. The salaryman, who became the ideal uh, hegemonic, masculinity in, uh, uh, hegemonic masculinity in Japan, came to symbolize the opticus, ev the, the everyman, as the skupta, for example, uh, uh, describes, uh, while the housewife, who became almost synonymous with womanhood, became the middle class every woman. Uh, as illustrated in a, a very illustrative example for this cultural hegemony of the salaryman can be seen in this inclusion. Uh, this book is, is called is part of a series called Japan in Your Pocket. Uh, other books of the series, uh, which is published by the J Japan Travel Bureau, and it's published every year again. And, I mean, it's re uh, republished. And other books are What to See in Kyoto, uh, uh, Enjoy Tokyo, Must See uh, Somewhere, or Living in Japanese Style, and they have a book about the manga, which is actually used for explaining for foreigners in Japan what is salaryman in Japan. Uh, as you can see, the salaryman is the special breed of worker uh, who has provided the driving force behind the economic miracle of post-war Japan. I don't have time to go into this book, but it's a nice book to look at. Uh, the salaryminization of, of Japanese men has been concurrent with the housewifeization of Japanese women. I've no, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to, to go to all the details, but I would like to say that housewifeization is a process by which modernization and industrialization in the West and in Japan uh, enhance the separation of the domestic and public spheres. In Japan, housewifeization, or shufuka, was marked also by the process of profe professionalization. The establishment and professionalization of the uh, full-time housewife role was far from natural evolvement of gender role division. The new life movement played a major role in naturalizing gender roles as part of a clear political economy of recovery and growth after the Second World War. 
The New Life, Life Campaign uh, began in the 1940s as a set of loosely connected initiative of government ministries and women's organizations aimed at improving daily life. However, during the 50s and through the early 1960s, the campaign became a comprehensive movement, a movement in which the state, the corporate sector, actually large corporations, and housewives were involved. As showed by Andrew Gordon uh, in its extensive study of the New Life movement, in the 1950s, the, powers of, of the power of the corporate sector became more pervasive as the plan to professionalize the role of the housewife became more prominent. It involved corporations directly, uh, directly in professionalizing housewives through public lectures, courses, corporate <coughs> magazines, and newsletters. So they actually professionalize the wives of, the, of their salarymen and make them courses and magazines, and etc. The various activities and the values uh, that they bestowed on workers and their families contributed to the view that identified the enterprise-dominated uh, uh, society with a particular structure of gender roles. This was cleverly done by the, by, uh, by the manner in which corporations were telling women what to do or what to be, and simultaneously offering them the possibility to participate in defining the role as uh, 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 the manager of the, uh, of the household or the modern uh, uh, manager. The, ext the extensive and energetic corporate new life uh, project was in fact so successful that by the end of the 1960s, as Andrew Gordon writes, the role of the full-time housewife was so well established, and I quote him, and so many young girls studied home economics in middle, in middle school, high school, and junior college that corporate programs to teach women to cook and shop hardly seemed necessary. More companies in fact curtailed their programs at that point, declaring their mission accomplished. The general background to this process of housewifeization was that of Japanese, becoming, uh, Japanese society becoming a company-centered society, or kigyo shakai. Uh, and uh, this can explain how the Japanese state, in conjunction with, with the Japanese business, could have worked on a welfare plan that subsidizes women's stay at home through system that has been referred to as a housewife, housewife welfare. More generally, the Japanese state, in, close, in a close pact with Japan's employ employment systems, in, engendered um, the male breadwinner uh, uh, model according to which men are breadwinners and women are housewives. The women I studied are the daughters of those perfect and enduring uh, hard and hardworking housewives who were produced by the professionalization process. They were in their 20s, the women I studied were in their 20s during the last day of the bubble economy and became known as the Hanako tribe. Hanako, Hanako is the name of a magazine, as I told this morning in the class. It's the name of a, a magazine for, for single women. Uh, <coughs> but after the women, th these women, uh, when they were uh, single, they were called Hanako, uh, tri Hanako tribe, uh, actually defining them as uh, defining their hedonistic uh, life lifestyle. So they were described uh, as uh, very hedonistic, but then again, as my research shows, uh, these same Yen Joy women, another of their, I mean, they were called the Yen Joy women, uh, readily followed the standard life plan of working as, a, 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 of quitting uh, their job uh, uh, after they work as uh, office ladies. They quit, quit their job uh, when they got married and accept, accepted the more frugal lifestyle of their model housewife mother. One example uh, for uh, their role initiation was that the women told me that they actually got rid of the brand name items, you know, that, uh, the oil, uh, that uh, uh, oil in the bubble economy used to, to be identified by buying many brand names. So when these women got married, they told me, okay, we got rid, we sold our uh, brand name items because what can we do with them? What can you do with a Chanel bag when you go to a PTA meeting? Uh, Yet, yet now, as they reach later, a later stage in their adult life, the economic and social stability in which they had been raised seem to have been followed by Japan's lost decade. Lost decade actually describe all this uh, the, 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 the generation of people who, who are not uh, regularly uh, following their uh, fathers and mothers' footsteps, not re readily becoming salarymen uh, for men. Thus, their concepts about their own social role and position can be described, as I said, as compressed between the more conservative ideas uh, of their mother's generation and the somewhat non-conventional individualistic ideas of the last decade. My study focuses on house, uh, housewives. However, I must note that the 
it's possible that bubble Japan is, is in fact characterized by unprecedented uh, diversity of lifestyle, lifestyles and may be also um, uh, more particularly characterized by an unparalleled overlap of ideas across different generations and social groups customarily regarded as entirely different. Di uh, differentiated. In, in this sense, feelings of insecurity, which were supposed or supposedly uh, 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 identified only a single woman, for example, in Japan now, may identify a, a housewife as well as salaryman, as we will shortly see. Marco and I interviewed about over 50 women, mostly living in Royal Heights. One of the first things that struck me in the, in the narratives of these women who were married, uh, 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 were married when times were more economically stable than now uh, was a natural or a tarimai uh, way in which they moved into the role of uh, the professional housewife upon marriage. Murakami-san, a mother of two boys and wife of a successful medical doctor, said, uh, I've never asked myself if it's okay to be always inside the house as a housewife only. My mother was there to guard the house, Iyeo Mamoru. Uh, I thought it was so natural, atarimai, to resign when you get married. I believe that this kind of atarimai, or uh, orderly life plan, that the women uh, narrate reflects what has been, uh, uh, what, uh, what is seen by them as, uh, and those surrounding them as a natural transition from one social role to another. Uh, however, I believe that this life plan should be regarded in terms of social, uh, uh, social and economic class, a perspective which is too often absent in the, in st in the study of Japanese society. Stories of success or failure in the neighborhood shed some light on, the, on such delicate economic class distinctions. They are very delicate, but they are there. Sakai-san is regarded by her neighbors as a model housewife, Shifu no Kagami, who performs her domestic tasks uh, impeccably, said, as my father was a salaryman, I could never imagine myself getting married to an owner of a small company or a store, nor as a craftsman. I can hardly imagine how they live. It doesn't look like a very easy life to me, don't you think? She asked Mariko. Sakai-san was raised in a well-to-do middle-class family. Her father worked, uh, works for a good company, and her mother still follows him in his uh, constant job transfers. Sakai-san's narrative is that of achievement. She has managed to find the right husband who can provide her the same secure middle-class life that she has, in fact, been raised to believe is the only possible way of living. Kato-san's story, however, is one of those failure or regret stories. A daughter of a banker, Kato-san Kato was perfectly raised to grow up and build her own standard family. As she, as she explained, for her parents, it was only natural that she would find herself a suitable uh, bank employee to marry, like her mother did. However, she failed to follow the typical route and married a non-typical salaryman instead. And her regret for deviating only bears out the strengths of the folk model according to which happiness lies only in living, only, uh, uh, in, uh, living in a standard family. It was a big love affair, Kato-san explains. I made, a big, I made a big mistake. I guess this is my destiny. Unfortunately, it was too late before I realized, I realized that it was a mistake. It was when Daisuke, my eldest son, was born. Kato-san ex complained and ex expressed discontent with uh, regard to her lifestyle on many, uh, on many other occasions. On one occasion, she uttered that becoming a real member of society meant earning a stable income, including bonus and all other benefits. She apparently openly blamed her husband for uh, his failure to utterly uh, fulfill his uh, male role as the breadwinner of the family. I always tell him, I quit my job to marry you, so you have the responsibility to bring us money. At the, at the time, when she t tells me, when we got married, it was almost prohibited for women to continue the, the job. At that point of time, our income were, were almost the same. If I would have continued working, she worked in a bank because she graduated from a good university, uh, if I would have continued working, I would have been earning more than him by now. It's too late now. But I want him to understand that I didn't quit the job because I wanted to, although in reality, I did want to quit. Marriage was like a goal for us women then. Women and their perspective on self and social role are the main interest of my book. However, when opportunities uh, came across, uh, uh, for, uh, for having extensive conversation with the other side of the corporate gender duality, the salarymen, I eagerly said them. In fact, uh, in my last visit to Japan, I've begun interviewing uh, men, and I'm planning to, to have more interviews this coming fall.
Nakano san, like other men I more recently interviewed, was full of pride of the role of the wife and mother. In fact, in his case, what he found most alluring was the role of the professional housewife. The word sengyo, a special occupation or a profession, he said, sounds attractive, kakoi, to me, he said. Although he said at first that it could be fulfilled by a woman or a man as long as it is performed seriously and perfectly, his so-called gender uh, uh, neutral tone soon changed and he strongly objected women or wives working outside, outside home for, for money. He said, if a housewife, a uh, shufu starts working for, for her self-fulfillment, then it's okay with me. And I think she should try it. However, if she wants to work outside to earn money because she must, for economic reasons, for the house budget, then it will feel like a pressure on me as a husband, and I will feel that I must try much harder to provide for the family. Following this, I asked him, and I quote from, uh, from the interview, so if you, were if you were to be born again, what would you, what would you like to become? Nakano san, without any hesitation, I would like to become a female. Why is that? Because women seem to enjoy themselves much more than men. I think they have much wider spheres in which they are permitted to take pleasure. Men cannot enjoy themselves too much. Do you mean that men aren't allowed or should not enjoy themselves? Yes, they are not allowed to enjoy. It may be an old I may be an old-fashioned guy in that I strongly hang to the idea that men should provide for their families, but I feel the heavy load of this responsibility. I wish I could escape from this pressure. I tell him, I have, I have heard this before, that men are working in order to guard the family. Mamori. So Iyo Mamori is used by women to guard the house and for men to guard from the, to protect, to actually supply for the family. So I heard in order to guard the family and, for, and not for their own pleasure or self-fulfillment, I tell him. What does Mamoru actually mean, I ask him. Mamoru in, the, Mamoru, <laughs> Mamoru. Mamoru in this sense means to support economically, to maintain them. Is this the role of men only? I was raised to think like this. If the society didn't promote such a tendency, I wouldn't care being a man. If there was an acknowledgement from the society that I don't have to behave like that, it would be okay for me to be a man. Uh, guarding the house is a phrase used both by men and women, as I said, whereas men are expected to guard or protect the house from the outside, uh, uh, women are uh, supposed to protect it from the inside. Um, the phrasing has a traditional flavor, uh, uh, like guarding the house, uh, uh, and, and because it's like protecting the, the society from the, from the outside, the ear from the outside, which, is something which was also accept something that was expected before. Uh, well, when it, many women tended to accept this terminology of Iyo Mamoru, same, uh, some women described their husband's traditional position with regard to this protection in somewhat critical or cynical tones. For example, a Kondo-san, one of the fashionable and relatively well-to-do young housewives, metaphorically uh, presented her husband an uh, objection to the idea that she would uh, look for a job. She said, he has, this, he, he has his tomage uh, samurai top knot on his head. I can see it on his head. He says that women should stay home. Men go out to protect us, he thinks, but they can do anything, and she means anything, uh, they want to do out, out of the house. Another woman said, they, our husband, are like, please let me concentrate on my work, as though they are bushy, samurai of the Edo period. This way of thinking, sti sti this way of thinking, uh, thinking still exists. However, we must be, f I, I, um, although they are, I mean, the way they are using the traditional uh, is not, uh, it's not only women uh, uh, who use this traditional uh, flavor, we must be careful from letting this traditionality confuse us in our attempt to explain gender differences. <coughs> In fact, this elect cultural dic dichotomy of traditional versus non-traditional is often used by scholars to explain uh, uh, the relatively higher tendency of Japanese women to quit work upon marriages uh, or pregnancy. Um, and nevertheless, the explanation that Japanese men are uh, Japanese women are more traditional uh, uh, in their expectations about gender roles does not hold when it comes to to uh, 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 using international opinion surveys. Uh, so I don't think that they they leave the work because of traditional way of thinking. In other words, the use of the traditional uh, vocabulary should not distract the focus from where it should be in fact located, uh, the social and economic structure that has developed in post-war Japan. As I have su suggested, at least in the 1950s, the Japanese state has been, be, 
has been act actively sustaining the corporate family uh, welfare system, which has become the defining feature of the social co contract among uh, capital, labor, and the state. Furthermore, the state has been vig uh, vigorously supporting and cultivating the alliance between corporate warriors and full-time housewives. Housewives. Comparative research shows that whereas in, the mo in most Western, uh, Euro Euro uh, Western uh, uh, European societies or Anglo-Saxon economies, from the, uh, at least from the late 1960s, uh, a more individualistic family gender uh, model has modified and often weakened the breadwinner model. This has obviously not, has not been the case in Japan. Scholars like Gottfried and O'Reilly describe Japan as a state in which the strong legacy of the male, bread, male breadwinner model has been influential well into the 1990s and into the 21st century. Similar to other socially uh, conservative welfare, welfare regimes like Germany, for example, in Japan, social economic policies have const constituted and nurtured the family wage and the marginalization of women in the labor market. Going back to the gender contract metaphor, whereas, mo whereas most literature describe gender, describe gender contract in terms of welfare regimes, so social policies, and economic arrangement, the American case has been illuminated in larger social and cultural terms, and I would like to take it uh, uh, for a minute. In her book, uh, The Hearts of Men, American Dreams, and the Flight from a Commitment, Barbara Herdrich described the shift from the male breadwinner model uh, in America, a, the shift from a male breed, uh, breadwinner model to an individualistic model, uh, in terms of a male revolt, uh, which can be seen as a moral shift in, the America, in which American men moved from an ethic of responsibility, self-discipline, and protective commitment to women to an ethic of self-fulfillment over all else. One of the striking distinctions between the American and Japanese cases is the high discrepancy in the concept of social roles. The erosion of the male breadwinner model in the United States is characterized by the uh, consequent erosion uh, in the significance given to, to roles. As Herdrick puts it, the sh social roles are viewed as no more than the repetitive performances of people who have forgotten that it is only other people who write the scripts and thus as unfit aspiration for adults. Judging from high, the high esteem men like Nakano-san uh, give to the role of the full-time housewife and from the strengths of the sh social role uh, constraints, he and other Royal uh, Heights men feel as, men, uh, as ha men or as husbands and father, it is certainly obvious that they do not see social roles as at unfit for adults. In fact, I argue that social roles have become one of the main building blocks a, a, a of the social, st social structure of modern Japan. I, suge I suggest to see the characteristics move from one life stage into the next, as it has been a, a molded in post-war Japan as a transition from, s from one single role to another single role. Uh, the question remains, in, in this, I, I, in a way, I, I relate to, uh, uh, to uh, Mary Brinton, who wrote about uh, the order in, in, in a, a, an article that appeared in 1992. Uh, she relate in, in a, a volume called The Japanese Social Organization, actually. She highlighted the, the rel relative re rigidity of the life plan that Japanese men and women follow, and I quote her. In a recent book, Lost in Transition, she suggests to see the transition from one life stage to another as that between ba, the Japanese, uh, the, uh, uh, Japanese term ba was translated by Chia Nakano as frame and by Brinton as a social, social locality. And I suggest that they are actually moving, not that we can have. So, so she suggests that it's, it's a very uh, Japanese kind of term that we cannot actually translate. And I suggest that we can term it as a social role. So they're actually changing social roles and, and moving. Uh, and, and kind of this is the life plan that they uh, follow. But now the question remains, what happened to this post-war single role social structure after the 1990s? When I set on, uh, on uh, this research in 2003, I was surprised to see that, the co that contrary to my expectation, there haven't been such major organizational change, at least as I could see in the lives of the residents of Royal Heights. Most women uh, uh, in Royal Heights define themselves as professional housewife, and most men still spend most of the daytime at their offices, or at least not at home. 
However, there are, there are some changes which, as I said, I'm, I'm trying now to, to explore further. One of the changes is related to the father's role in the, fam in the family. When I asked Sakai-san, the same woman I, I mentioned before, who said that she couldn't even imagine marrying another man other than a salaryman, when I asked her who is the ideal husband, she said, I don't, I don't know, maybe a father who plays with his kids. My husband played with Kazuya, our only child. His role is to play with Kazuya. I think it's okay. He has never he, as he never complains about anything, I don't mind uh, that he doesn't help me with the housework. I sometimes hear other women complain that their husbands give them tasks around the house, so they, the women, think, then why don't you help me uh, more with the baby? However, in my case, as he never complains about anything, including the way I perform housework, I cannot really complain either. Sakaisen was surely raised in a way that didn't leave uh, her many other options but to have to form her own standard family. Nevertheless, she did learn a lesson from her own experience in such a model family. For one, she made a different choice for her husband. Unlike her father, her husband comes to open days at the school. I like him this way, as I didn't like having a too busy father when I was a child. Japanese companies also have recently become aware of the issue of the absent father, and they design programs of family, family sabisu, family service, sending the men home early, at least once a week, and letting them attend activities at school. For the women, I must say, it's sometimes tiring. They would say, what am I going to do with him when he comes early? Uh, but, but as our focus here is on, uh, on gender co the gender context, so what about the division of labor at home? Has it changed? Uh, time use uh, um, studies uh, have, are often used as a means for examining the gender division of labor in the household. And in Japan, as elsewhere, they unsurprisingly un and unfortunately confirm that women spend more hours per day in domestic work than men. Ishi Kuntz, who studied uh, the sharing of housework and childcare in contemporary Japan, summarizes her recent work presented to the UN, actually, that the le she's saying that the level of Japanese father participation in housework and childcare has changed only very little over the last uh, 15 years, and it remains lower compared to other countries. As you can see, it doesn't matter, actually, if it's a double-income family or a single-income family. You see the men participation, the, this very narrow uh, yellow uh, line. This is the house, the, 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 how many, uh, like 32 minutes or 25 minutes a day. Um, Japanese women do, and, and then, uh, but as we see here, we see double-income family. So mo the women I, I, I interviewed did quit their jobs and, and didn't work, but most women, them, they, like other women, do, uh, did go back, or women do go back to work to the workforce when their children grow up for various reasons. In fact, recently they tend to admit more freely that it is due to economic necessity that they go to back to work. Some of Royal Heights women started working in the later years of my research, but not before they asked the permission of their husbands and often also of their kids. The last thing they would like to do is to cause any kind of disturbance, mewaku, to their families. The success, actually, the, suc the most suc successful cases of part-time work for women are, in, in fact, those in which the husband does not even notice, as the wife is there at the threshold to send him off to in the morning and to welcome him back in the late evening. Uh, women's employment patterns in Japan is usually described in terms of an M-shaped curve. You can see here uh, Japan as compared to America and Sweden, the, the dream of Sweden. Uh, so it means that women actually, the M curve means that women quit job for, for uh, uh, when they get married or have a child and then they come back. We have another, uh, sorry for the primitive uh, presentation, but anyway, so the curves show that, that women, so there has been a slight change. So women in the past used to quit job, to quit the job earlier in an early age and for longer years, now they quit less. Uh, but so the slight, the, there is a slight change in the curves. Um, however, uh, uh, the M curve is still a good description of women's participation in the M curve. And, and um, uh, moreover, the M curve, uh, uh, this uh, description uh, do not ref uh, does not reflect uh, uh, how many of the working women over the age of 24 are actually married, because this includes married and unmarried women. More, important, more importantly, the numbers do not disclose the nature of women's return to the workforce in their 30s, nor do they depict the real meaning of 
blank or branku, as the women called it, these years of staying at home and how, how it experienced uh, the way they uh, go back to society. Ba basically, nobody would take as, as uh, uh, this uh, one of the women said, I mean, I'm 32, I'm too old to retire to the bank. I can also uh, only go back to be a supermarket cashier or she has, in fact, finished, uh, ended up working in a manual work somewhere. Uh, is, uh, as shown in many studies, women pay high penalties for leaving the workforce for child raise. The legacy of the breadwinner model seems to constrain options for, for reform. Japanese women are thus weak outside the home and find it hard to go back to society. However, what about the, their power inside the home? Uh, Iwao Sumiko argues that the, uh, that the major factor in the continued pride Japanese women take in the profession of housewife is the fact that they hold the purse strings uh, in the household and manage the home. Most Royal Heights women are in charge of managing the household uh, budget and control important decisions, uh, 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 often including the amount of money they give us allowances for their husband. Nevertheless, I believe that we should not be too easily misled by this allegedly total division between the home and, the soci in soci and society. In reality, as admitted by most women, women do not take important decisions alone. Moreover, most of the mothers, uh, what I found out that most of the uh, mothers find various ways to tell their children where the money comes from. Sometimes they would say every evening at the dinner table where they sit alone and the, fa the, the father is still at, at home, they would say, you know, I take the money out of the machine, but actually the money is earned by your father who is working so hard now and uh, kawaii so and everything. One of the trendy young housewives, if I want to see a change, one of the trendy young housewives developed an unusual pattern of acknowledging the father's contribution to the family. Harasan has some small income, income of her own. She usually works during the night after her daughter goes to bed. She tells her daughter that she should thank her father for the food on the table and her mother for the sweets she enjoys. The new generation of Royal Heights housewife is in general less tr strict about putting the men on, of the house on pedest a pedestal as their mother used to do. Nevertheless, I believe that even if it's only food, uh, if it's only food, not including sweets or maimono, which as a matter of fact are symbolically related to femininity, uh, for which the family is totally dependent on the father, the actual recurrent mention of this dependency plays the same role or similar role in reinforcing the breadwinner model. The way Harasan explains the facts of life to her daughter can be seen as one of those gendered strategies, which I discuss at length in the book. These strategies vary, vary by age, class, and other factors. Other women use what Ochild call, called Ochild in her uh, excellent book, uh, The Second Shift, calls balancing. For example, when the husband is out of work, sometimes some are now in our age uh, in, in Japan, some men use, lose their jobs or at least don't uh, maybe lose it for, for a while or have to change jobs. So while the husbands are house, uh, out of uh, uh, work for a while, they will balance it by not asking him to do anything at home and making him uh, the pillar of the, uh, of the house. In an interview I'd, uh, I had last October with one of the husbands who does not earn as an ordinary salary man, he said that he does a lot of housework, but he will never hang the laundry outside, not to be seen by other housewives. He does not care about it as much as his wife does. In the title of my talk, I posed the question mark. So are we facing a new gender contract in post bubble Japan? Well, I may disappoint uh, some of you, as I cannot give any clear-cut answer to this question. While housewives may be, rega may be regarded as the more traditional social category in modern Japan, I attempt to show that even, Royal Heights, even in Royal Heights, I could see a variety of, uh, the, a variety of housewives. housewives. The younger mo modern housewives seem to be more trendy and fashionable, and unlike their mothers, they are, they are allowed to paint their nails. But does it really mean? Does it mean a real change in how they and and they and the society in large see gender roles? The feminist, schol the feminist scholar Og Ogura Chikako recently studied single urban women in their 30s and early 40s and found that some women, and especially graduates of junior colleges or lower-ranked four-year universities, saw marriage. Uh, still so marriage as a means for a uh, uh, continued self or see marriage as a uh, uh, means for continued self actualization and pleasure and not as a gateway of life or to life of constraints as it was for their mothers 
she ident and and then she ident what what she identified was the uh, shinsengyo shinsengyo shufushiko or orientation to a new type of housewife. This new orientation was reported also in the, in a wh the white paper of the uh, government in 1998, and uh, uh, as it was in the government uh, report, it was a post uh, it is epitomized in the expression a man. Husband works full time and shares housework. A woman or wife does housework and, and pursues hobbies or hobby based work. So, actually, what uh, Ogura says, and uh, actually also the gov Japanese government says, that young, that uh, uh, single women in Japan actually expect to get married to a husband who can support them nicely. I mean, they can, ha can let them uh, stay at home and have a hobby, which is usually expensive to, to have, like to, 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 to uh, learn how to, uh, do ex to do accessories or bakery, and then maybe to have a small bakery class at home uh, and enjoy it. It's not actually for, for living. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, and uh, as I show in the book, and I, sh I talked about it this morning, but I, don't I didn't have time uh, to, to touch it at all here, uh, the market and the media are actually very happily participating in producing this right now, new, new images for women who can enjoy life, uh, new styles of trendy housewifery. One of the images of uh, this new femininity that I go more deeply into the book is that of the Charisma Shufu, Charisma Housewife. The greatest of all is Kurihara Harumi. Uh, I s if, you, if you want, I can speak much more about it later. Ka Kurihara Harumi uh, is, a lot, uh, uh, is uh, very well known in Japan, is uh, actually a celebrity in Japan. She has a very large business of cooking books, her own line of produ products, uh, but she still insists that she is only a sengyo shufu. She is only a professional housewife. Her message to women is that ie no naka ni mo tanoshi koto ipai. In the house too, there are plenty of fun things to do as long as you do it with a light lipstick and, a, and a nice earrings. Uh, so what I'm saying that there, I, there is a new kind of housewifery or new kind of femininity which is offered to Japanese women through the media, through the market. But does it mean that if, if you are doing a housework in a nice apron, actually I got a pre as a present from her in the interview, I got a nice apron which I'm I now use when I'm doing the housework, the house uh, domestic uh, jobs at, house, at the house. But does it mean a real change? I leave it as an open question, but I would like to conclude my talk uh, by noting uh, 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 the recent extremely successful media and market buzz called marriage hunting or konkatsu. Uh, konkatsu is based on uh, uh, it's the same hu hunting for for marriage is based on hunting for a job, which was correct, which is characterized in Japan as a very rigid way of looking for a job, a very uh, orderly uh, way of looking for a job. The, the term was uh, coined by Yamada Masahiro in, in a, another s of his successful book books, which called which called Konkatsu. I don't remember the, the, the title, but anyway, it, it has become a, a, a leading catchphrase. And, uh, and also a big business uh, spawning konkatsu bar, konkatsu TV drama, uh, and kon uh, konkatsu proposal cake, for example. The konkatsu proposal cake is a nice cake, which costs a lot of money, and a letter which, is, which looks like a, basically a job offer in which the man or the young man offers uh, the prospective bride a, a kind of a job uh, offer entering the house and be his wife and it's, uh, it is written something like you cannot uh, actually refuse this offer that I'm offering you. Um, so this thriving trend is usually regarded in terms of offering new ways of date for dating in changing society. However, I would like to suggest looking at it as the ultimate example of a perfect liaison among various agents of the states who jointly partake in creating an agenda aimed not only at boosting marriage and birth, birth rate, but in fact, and even more importantly, because I didn't speak about it, but one of the alarming concerns of, of the Japanese government these days is the, the, the uh, decrease in uh, uh, birth rate. Because I speak about how I studied housewife, but, but Japanese women now marry less basically maybe because they don't want to, to enter th this housewife uh, pattern that I talked about. But anyway, the Japanese government is very concerned and 
they have many kind, they try to, to, to promote it in many ways, but they will never promote it like having a child out of marriage because having a child in, like, having a child in Japan means getting married right? so in a way I'm saying that they want to promote it's more important for them to keep the standard family pattern than having more children. If I, for example, compare it to the case in Israel in which a uh, demography is always, I mean, people have a lot of children. People could have children, uh, any, anyone can have children. It doesn't have to be he or she, doesn't have to be married, doesn't have to be a, a heterosexual, a, a heterosexual et, et, et cetera. In Japan, when I asked women if they, if they wouldn't have been married, would they consider having a child? They say, they, d they haven't heard about a sperm bank or something like that. And the, uh, so, for example, like uh, Weno Chizuko, the feminist writer, she said that if the Japanese government would really be interested in, in, having, uh, in, in increasing the, the birth rates, they could, uh, like in the Singapore, for example, they could support single women having children, but, but it's not the case in Japan. Single women are only divorced or, or widows, and they are not supported at all in Japan. So this is a, a very interesting uh, theme. On its own, but, but on its own, but I'm like just to fit. It's it's kind of uh, humoristically, but but then we have this. Uh, 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 but what is promoted is is marriage, as I said. So we have this Konkatsubura. Konkatsubura is by Triumph, Triumph Film Japan. It was another uh, very uh, kind of uh, media buzz, but you don't wear really wear this bra, but it was uh, promoted anyway. So when you ent when you insert the the engagement ring, there is the uh, Mendelssohn March of wedding. Uh, and there is this clock, the time count for uh, you know life plan and time count. This is interesting. And but uh, the last uh, image is this one. We have the konkatsu bra setto. The set includes an apron. Uh, so an apron and a, 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 a something to hold uh, hot pants uh, with. So in fact, if you get this, if you uh, accept the konkatsu proposal cake offer and you enter this job as uh, the wife of this uh, prospective husband, you actually uh, end up with this beautiful apron. Uh, so what I'm trying to say that, uh, that these, ki these kind of, of, of uh, image, new images actually uh, reinforce the same good old gender contract that has developed in post war Japan, which I labeled here the Japanese corporate gender contract. Thank you. Wow, I was shorter.